This is a review of cat tracks. Uh, before I actually start the video, I'm going to do a little slideshow here that basically shows uh, high quality versions of uh, the box and the cartridge and things like that. So here we have the box. On the cover, you'll see that there's a little boy who's um, pulling his dog around. This little boy isn't in the game at all. Uh, sometimes I wonder how this kind of thing happens. Um, maybe we'll do a close up of this kid and check him out. But uh, in this game, you just play a cat who's being chased by dogs and you can actually uh, turn from a cat into a dog catcher and run around, or, or dog catching truck, and uh, run around and, and chase the, uh, the dogs. Uh, on the back of the box here, we have uh, the instructions and the rules, which is pretty common for, I think all of the Emerson Arcadia boxes are like this. Uh, the spine of the box, or the edge, um, you'll notice here this is cart number one, and that's because uh, we're playing these games uh, on the, Yahoo group for the Arcadia, and we're gonna be playing them in order. There's 22 cartridges for the Emerson Arcadia. Next, we have the inside. There's a little place where you can store your manual and the overlays. Box is a little beat up, but it's not too bad. This is actually my probably most beat up box. Um, and the instructions for the manual. And uh, the manual actually unfolds, as you'll see when I'm uh, showing in the video. It's not a booklet, and it's not stable together or anything like that. The manual is, um, pretty simple. Uh, there's, I guess, what's, what do people call it when it's not written well? There's kind of English in it. Uh, I'm not sure if that's what you'd call it, but that's kind of uh, how the manuals are written. And they're pretty slim on details, and sometimes there's wrong information in them, like which controller to use and things like that. Hey, but they're better than no manuals. Um, this is what the overlays look like. The system lets you pause and unpause, but for whatever reason, um, they always call it freeze and unfreeze, which I don't know if that's a translation error or, or what, but I've never heard that a pause ever called freeze before, but eh, makes it uh, maybe unique. Here we have the, the manual, or excuse me, the uh, cartridge cover. Um, I like the box art on the cartridge like this. It looks pretty nice for a system that is um, kind of uh, inexpensive when it was released, I guess. Although um, lately we, I've been hearing that it was about $200 when it was first released, which I find uh, expensive uh, compared to uh, some of the other systems that were around in 1982. The back of the cartridge has the instructions, which is handy, especially if you buy a loose cartridges, um, then you can play them without having to look up the instructions. The top label for the cartridge looks like this. I think it's pretty nice. And that brings us to the end. Um, now let's break into some video and check it out. Hi, this is Adam, also known as Bally Alley and the Atari Age forums and a few other places. I'm making a video for Cat Tracks, which is a game released for the Emerson Arcadia. It's cartridge number one for this system. There's uh, up to 24 cartridges boxes, but only 22 games were actually released for the Emerson Arcadia 2001 in the United States. Overall, um, outside of the United States, I I think there might have been between 50 and 60 games released um, for, I think there's like 30 different systems. Some of them have very, uh, different cartridge slots and things like that. If you want to have a detailed history of how the system works um, and more to know more about the Emerson Arcadia, you should read Ward Shrake's um, section of the Digital Press Price Guide for number seven. Um, it's on, he has a section in there on the uh, Arcadia 2001 and it's quite long. He has a, it's also available uh, in a PDF format. You can look around the internet and find that. If you go to orphangames.com, I have a version of it that you can read. It's um, and also I think uh, there's the, his Arcadia effect there. Where Trake did a great job in about 10 years ago in 2003, I guess more than 10 years ago now, and uh, figuring out how the system worked. And uh, he uh, dumped many, many, many cartridges for this system and got them archived. So the game we'll be talking about today is um, Cat Tracks, and the reason I'm doing this one is because last week I started a high score club on the Yahoo group for the Arcadia, and the, I want to do the games in order from 1 to 24. And the first one is, as I said, Cat Tracks. This is a 4K cartridge released in 1982. Um, it's for one player, and it was released by uh, UA Limited. Uh, in this case, this game uses uh, the long case. Um, this is kind of a legalized version of Pac-Man, which is, and it's also one of the most car uh, common games for the system. This game was meant to be a uh, version of Pac-Man, and 
according to War Trade Care, we have uh, it was based on a game that was released called Crazy Gobbler, and it's just a maze game. He he goes into great detail if, if you want to know more about this. This game was released, well, it wasn't released, but it was created for the Atari 2600 in the maybe 1983 or so, and someone found it in the late 90s, or and uh, eventually it was dumped. And I think Atari Age released a box version of it. Um, similar game, pretty simple. What I'm going to do here is uh, explain a little bit about this game and how it works. This is the box, of course, and this is the console. It's got um, kind of Intellivision-like controllers. I'm not going to go into detail about the system, but uh, when you get the system, it actually came with this little device here, which is it makes it into a joystick. But uh, if you're going to play this game and pretty much any other game, you should screw it in, and uh, so you can have it play like a joystick. This is actually an analog controller, um, but I don't really know of any games that really use it as an analog controller. Um, so when you're playing it, it feels like you're using a digital controller. Um, it's self-centering. Um, it's you know this this uh, controller is 35 years old, so it's it doesn't work great. I don't know how it worked when it was new, but it probably worked a little better than this. Um, so let's show you a little bit about the cartridge. Um, the Emerson Arcadia is known to have uh, some of the worst box art for the system. I don't mind it so much. Um, you, um, this is what the inside of the box looks like. It's um, this is how the cartridge here, and the instructions and the overlays. I'm going to take the overlays out now, and I'm going to put them on the system. What we have is the left overlay goes on here. The right overlay goes on here. I'm going to bring this up here so you can check it out a little more. Um, you haven't really seen the the game yet, but the way it works is a maze game. But um, you've, you're a cat and you're getting chased by uh, four dogs, and you can warp I think twice around the maze and just end up in a random location. There's gates, so if you've ever played uh, Mousetrap, it's similar to that. There's gates you can close and open, and there's another way to press warp here. If you press any of these buttons in this row or here or here, then it'll open, warp, or close the gate. Um, and on the right hand controller, this, they call it freeze, but it's um, it's a pause button. So if you press anything in here, you get the pause. Anything here, you unpause the game. Now, when I play this game, I find using the keypad is okay for some games. This game, I almost never use these. I would love to be able to, but it's very awkward. I do use warp because um, it's provided on the uh, buttons on the side. Either Each uh, button does the same thing in this game, I think on all games. And if so, if you're playing the game, that's great. You can control the game left, right, up, down, you know. Um, but it's pretty awkward to suddenly close a gate or open a gate. But I will be doing that, and I'll show you and explain a, bit, a little bit of detail about the game and how it works. So let's get this started here. Oh, um, maybe before we even do that, I'll show you about a close-up of the cartridge, and when you flip it over, you've got instructions. So even if you lose the uh, a manual, which has a lot of um, English in it, um, you know, maybe this system was made originally in Hong Kong and not Taiwan. That sounds right. Um, but I'm no expert on the system. I just uh, enjoy playing it sometimes. It's not the greatest system. A lot of people are down on it, and I can kind of see why. Um, most of the games are rip-offs of other games. So here's the manual, it unfolds like that. And so if you are looking at it, you open it up, that's page, or the cover is page one. So, and then you start going like this, and you make your way through, all the way to the back. And the manual's pretty well put together. All the manuals are, for the um, arcade, I think are pretty good. But there's um, there's never really any backstory. Well, sometimes a little bit, but not, not too much. So let's take a break here, and I'll show you the game. All right, now before I show you what the game looks like, I'm gonna shove the cartridge into the system. Like I said, this is Catrix. It's a long cartridge. The short ones are maybe about this long. There's a connector on the bottom. And as I said earlier, there's the instructions on the back. Goes into the system quite easily. And in a second, I'll turn it on um, and I'll start playing the game. Okay, so this is my Arcadia setup. I usually have my Bally Astrocade here, but I've moved it so I can make this video. Uh, I want to turn on the TV, 
uh, I have a 13 inch uh, flat screen CRT, which I, um, I think I originally got this model of TV in uh, 2001. Um, in 2005, my house was broken into, and most of my electronics and video game systems were stolen. But I rebought this uh, TV on, uh, I think, eBay for, I don't know, 50 bucks. And uh, nowadays, you could probably get it for much cheaper. But this is uh, has a lot of great inputs, uh, component, and all that. I don't need to bore you with the details. Um, but if you have a chance, get a Toshiba flat screen TV from like 2000, early 2000s to mid 2000s, and um, you'll be able to use it with pretty much any video game system um, except for HDMI and they work fantastic. Um, I'm going to be doing a close-up of this TV uh, for the video. Um, I don't, I mean I have a way to do composite in via this RF connection that is used on the Arcadia but I just prefer not to use it because it looks uh, more authentic if I take a video of the screen. Um, it makes uh, editing a little more difficult but these aren't meant to be professional are they? This is just uh, something to pass my time and maybe a couple of people can enjoy by watching on the internet. So, here we go. We've got the TV. Let's get some great looking static. You don't see that too much anymore uh, when you're using an LCD screen. All right, there's the beautiful static. It's on channel three. I press power, and there's the um, original screen. And um, I'm gonna show you, I don't know if you can see very easily, but the Arcadia um, has controllers that are coiled. And that sounds like a great idea. And it is a great idea, actually. It makes the system nice and, um, uh, compact. I mean, the system is compact, but the coil, I don't know if you can see how long that reaches, but that is about a foot of coil. and doesn't really uncoil very much, so I'm, I'm about even with my camera, which makes me about three feet away from my TV. I mean, of course, I can move the, uh, the uh, system closer to me, and I'm going to when I actually play the game, but it's a uh, the, the, these, you have to be right next to the system when you're playing it. This isn't something you can um, have uh, your system by the TV and stretch out on your on your chair and play from a, a you know a few feet away. Uh, but that's okay. Uh, the, it's the control works all right. It's not perfect, but it's uh, it gives you something. So uh, I'm going to uh, get a different uh, perspective on the TV right now and turn off some lights so you don't see my reflection in it, and we'll check it out. So here we have the blank screen of Catrax, and now it's on. I'm going to be talking a little bit about the manual and uh, telling you how to play the game a little bit. I've got a light on here on the side, and it's a little hard to uh, for me to see, but I'll see what I can work out. I've got a flashlight as well. The room is dark. I've, um, hopefully this is working out okay. Uh, the object of the game is that uh, you got to clear the maze. If you've ever played Pac-Man, you've basically played this game before. This game has some pretty cool options. Um, in the center of the screen, you see a cat, or a cat's face. At the top, something that look like mice, maybe, to me. They're actually dogs, and they chase you around the maze. There's three of them. On the sides, this is option level one. There are three exits on each side, and if I go out the left exit, of course, I come out the right side, um, and vice versa. Uh, the, uh, what happens is, uh, well, before we even continue with what happens, let me tell you about some options. So, we have this game, I'm going to start it up, and you have, um, I can open and close gates. So, in this case, I can open and close this one. So, that's open and closed. And if I warp, now I disappear somewhere randomly. I can, of course, move around the screen. I'll talk more about that after I, um you about the options. So in option one, which is shown on the top right corner, uh, I am able to um, have the gate feature on and the warp feature on. Game two, which is, oops, I meant to do, let's try this again. Uh, oh, that's game two. Okay, in the, uh, game two we have uh, the warp feature only, no, no gate features. So if I was to play this, I can't open and close gates. In game three, which is this one, I have uh, the gate feature only and no ability to warp. Game four, I have the ability, or I actually have no abilities, I can't change it like that at all. So I can't warp or close the gates. So I guess there are um, just four games, but there's like eight options. So let's go back to uh, game one, option one. So now if I choose option one, um, 
like we've already talked about this, we have six exits total, so three tunnels. Option two, we have um, two tunnels on each side. And option three, we have two tunnels on each side, but in different locations. Option four, we have uh, one tunnel on each side, so this one's a little harder. Um, I really only have experience playing option uh, one and game one. Um, it's kind of a, a good way to start, and I enjoy being able to warp around the screen and also um, open and close the gates, which is hard to do with the controller, but hey, that's the way it goes. So option four, uh, I already talked about. Option five has is the same as option one, but the red dog, if it shows up as right in this one, it's the middle dog, uh, runs much faster when it chases the cat. Option six is um, the same option as two, um, but the red dog runs much um, Hmm. It also runs faster when chases the cat, and it just must must run much faster. Option seven uh, is the same, but the dog runs faster. And uh, option, whoops, I'm changing games when I want to. Let's do a comparison here. Let's try. Well, let's go to option five again. So there's eight options. So now it's going to go back to option one. So let's. Well, let's see. Oh man, this must be annoying to watch, but hey, this is what happens when you're learning how to play a game, sort of, although I've played this quite a bit. Um, option one, and I'll start and see how fast the guy comes out. Well, that's option eight. So, option one, and let's look, ch uh, check out the red dog in the middle. I think, okay, so that's how fast he comes out. I'll go through a tunnel here. All right, so let me reset the system. Go to option five, where the red dog goes faster. Let's start it up. Let's see how much faster the red dog goes. All right. Um, oh, in the middle just appears something I can eat. Oh, look, he, he goes quite a bit faster. Um, so, oh, and he also goes quite a bit randomly, too. It doesn't talk about that. And he goes at random speeds. Hmm. And I don't know if I'd want to play that one. That's, that's pretty rude. <laughs> Let's reset and go back to option six. Hopefully the sound is loud enough in this. And we'll start that game. Let's see what it, how fast he moves around. So, oh yeah, he does seem to be moving faster. Way faster. I don't know how he could avoid that. That does not seem fun. Let's go to option seven. Start the game. So here, I think I just collected an apple. And they're worth uh, some points. I'll describe that in more detail later. Um, so I don't notice too much. Wow, that is, yeah, he does move a lot faster. I'm only gonna show option eight. Uh, well, I, it's only the last option. I might as well show it. And, oops. Let's uh, go here. Um, he's, kind of up there stuck, I guess, right now. Maybe he's gonna, there he goes. Yeah, so yeah, the, the, the best option probably to start is option one. So before I continue here, I'm going to uh, talk a little bit about point values. So in this game, if you eat the catnip, which are the dots, you get 20 points each. If you eat an apple, you get a thousand points. If you eat a fish, which is in the middle, and it turns you into a dog catcher. Yeah, I don't know how that happens, but you do. Um, then you can eat the dogs and they're worth 200 points each. But just getting the fish, which appears in the middle of the screen, kind of like the, what is it, the power pellets in Pac-Man? Um, it's kind of like that. I think that's about it. The um, cartridge for this game actually shows um, you leading around a dog um, and you're a little boy, but there's no little boy in this game or anything like that. And when you do get the, uh, what is it, the uh, fish, you are able to uh, eat the dogs for a certain amount of time. And that's going to, you get a countdown timer, which starts at um, like 5.0, I think, and which is equivalent to about 30 seconds. But as you play it, uh, it gets down for each, as further as you get into the game. So I'm just going to play the game quickly, um, give you a run through of what it looks like. I'll try to play a complete game. I'm not very good at it, I should warn you. Um, I think my top score for the high score club, and I'm playing, by the way, an NTSC system. This game plays a little bit faster on NTSC, uh, which is okay. Um, and I know in PAL, all the games for the system play a little slower. And uh, 
but that's not the, my option. So um, one more time, I'm gonna do a reset. I'm playing game one, option one. Uh, that's going to allow me, as I was saying earlier, to close and open the gates, which I don't normally use when I play the game because I find it awkward to reach up onto the hand controller and uh, do these gates because they're, you know, in the in the moment. Um, Oh, uh, another thing I should mention, and I'll do it, I'll start the game, and when you're playing this game, I don't know if this is too loud, I might turn it down just a wee bit here. Uh, it doesn't seem loud enough to be picked up. So, my uh, character, I, on, when you're playing Pac-Man, you're able to turn on a dime. Here, you basically turn, um, how does it work, I would say. If you've ever played Casey Munchkin, you sort of have uh, a a grid you can turn on, and that's how this game works. So, for as wide as each one of these squares is, like, I can turn only at those points. Like, I can start turning beforehand. It's kind of hard to tell when you're just watching me, but I, I'll try to describe it. So I'm going left, or right. Um, oh, by the way, here's an apple. So if I want to turn, I'm starting to turn now, but it takes a second. But it's not like the controls are slow, it's consistent, and you only can turn on the left, or right, um, or up or down, um, when the game is uh, ready for you to have your input. Alright, so let's start the game. Alright, see if I can beat my high score, which is 17,000. Um, move it around, a little bit. I, I, um, okay, let's go ahead and get the apple and get killed. All right. I, should, I would like to use the excuse that since I'm making a review video of this game that it makes it much harder for me to play, but that's not a very good excuse. I'm just not very good at this game. Um, I'd also like to bl blame it on the controller, which I kind of can't. Oh, now I can eat the, the guy. So right now I've, I'm turning into a dog truck. Hopefully that comes out okay. And also increases my speed, which I don't think is talked about in the manual, but makes it really handy. You can like, I think you're going about twice as fast. Get the apples, they're worth quite a bit of points. A thousand points each. And I think there's a limit of five apples per screen. And you could probably point push if you wanted to in this game. I don't I don't really do that. I don't play it enough to really know how to do that. Oh, I just realized I was the, the dog catcher and I did not even bother trying to uh, get the uh, to eat them. He's gonna eat me. Shoot. Alright, so what's funny about this game, they run right into you. So, alright. This uh, system has graphics that are redefinable characters and also sprites. Um, you can have four sprites on the screen at once. And in this case, um, that's why you have three um, baddies, which are the dogs, and one cat. Or in this Right now, I'm actually the uh, um, dog catcher. So let's see if I can't try to leave one on the screen. Sometimes I get greedy trying to do stuff like that and I end up getting killed, which is gonna happen here. So, oh, I should show you. Um, oh, let's go get that, that'll be fun. I can close and open the gates. So I'm closing the gates, I'm opening the gates. Now, it'd be really handy if I knew how to do that. And I mean, it's not like I don't know how to do that. It'd be handy. If I can do that easily while I'm playing the game. I can almost, they're almost kind of like trapped in there, so that's kind of cool. Okay, so let's go get that. I can open the gate. Maybe they'll come at me. It's kind of funny they come eat me. Um, and there we go. And I guess, what else we got going on here? I think I have one more uh, dog catcher that's going to appear. And as the levels progress, I don't think that the baddies get faster. Um, it's possible that they do, but I haven't noticed. I have, of course, I've only gotten, I think I've gotten to the third screen. And the, by the way, the mazes don't change. Let's see. Ah, running away, running away. Okay, come on, come on, come on. Open the gate, ah, shoot. See, I had to like look down at the keypad to open the gate. Um, Okay, let's see if I can get that. Or I can just try to eat the pill. Or the, excuse me, the catnip. Oh, come on. Ah, uh, run away. This is what happens when I leave one on the screen just to get to where I can try to get points. Uh. Okay, 
oh, my game is over. I'll actually clear the screen. So I will start it up. Let's see if I can't beat my high score. I will, um, I guess I was going to say I won't comment while I'm playing the game, but I will. Might as well. So the Arcadia system isn't for everybody. It's um, gotten much more expensive since I've gotten mine. I do enjoy playing it, but I wouldn't say if you don't own one of these that you're missing out. Um, there's a pretty good emulator uh, written by James Jacobs. It's called Ami Arcadia. Um, he also has a version for, um, or excuse me, it's called Win Arcadia, and the version he's written for the Amiga is called Ami Arcadia. Yes, he does support the Amiga to this very day, and it's 2017, so that is pretty damn awesome. I am really about to get killed here. All right. And I do think it's weird that you slowly change. One of the quirks of this system is that I, I, the games are programmed okay. There's no, I would say, all the games I've played, and I have a, a multi-card that was re, uh, created by Ward Shriek in about 2001, and it has all the games that were released in America and many of the games that were released um, overseas. Um, so it's got about 50 to 60 games on it. And so, I, 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 um, you, um, you get a good look at the game's library. And if you don't have the multi-card, the only way to play these other games would be if you um, play them under emulation. Okay, let's go and get that 1,000 points over here. Running, running, running. Come on, come on, come on. I can do this. All right, cool. I did get one of these, but uh, I think there's no multipliers for it. So if I get the, oh man, can I do it, can I do it? I did it. Um, so the first dog is worth the same as the last dog, which is kind of a shame. So, like, you know, in Pac-Man, I think uh, the first one is 200, then 400, and etc. Um, all up to, what, 1,600 points, I think? I'm no expert in these maze games. I just play them. So as I was saying, this um, system is it's, it's neat. Um, it'd be kind of cool if someone could make a better controller for it, because the best games for the system, like this one here, it looks like a generic maze game, and it kind of is, but it's got some elements that are not, you won't find in other maze games, at least none that I've played. Um, so that's, that's pretty fun. Um, I've got 9,900 points, that's pretty good. Um, like I think I said earlier, my, my high score is about 20,000. Um, I'd like to be able to beat that, and it'd be great if I could get a pretty good score for the high score club here, and see if I can't bore everyone else <laughs> while I'm playing. Um, I, I think this, oh, maybe now that I'm looking at the truck, I think it looks like a plumbing truck to me. But it um, looks a little bit like it's a... Uh, okay, let's see if I can get that last one. It'd be nice if I could learn to use... Uh, I'm not going to be able to. Okay, it's going to disappear before I get a chance to use it. So... I'll just clear the screen. Oh, there's a just screen changing color. Super exciting. And so basically you've just seen the whole game, as far as I know. Um, you've seen me open and close the gates, and what would be nice is if they had the same button open and close the gates, but they do not. Um, and I'm not sure why, because that would be handy, um, and you could just use your thumb to do that. Oh shoot, ooh, 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 am I going to be able to do it? No, I'm not. Uh, Alright, 12,000 points so far. Is that my last guy, or first guy that I've killed? I think it is. Well, that's handy. Something you should be careful of when you're playing this game is if you, um, when the game first starts, only two of the baddies come out. And if you end up getting the fish, you are unable to actually. Well, wouldn't you know it, as I was recording, my battery went dead on my camera, and my last game, which I had 22,400 points on, I, I, it just, when it stopped recording, the video, I guess, must have saved, and that was that. So, about when I was up to about 12,000 points, the video just ends. So that's why you're hearing me talk about the game like this. But since I'm playing the game again, and it's been, I don't know, 30 minutes, I'm gonna try putting the game on a separate setting. I also noticed that the sound wasn't too loud, but I'm gonna just leave it where it's at. And I'm gonna play option, mm, I didn't mean to press start, I'll press reset again. I will do game four. And option five, where that stupid mouse goes too fast. I will start the game and see what happens. This score won't count for the high score club, but who cares? 
the point of this is actually just to play the games. The high school club is a really good reason. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that makes it pretty much impossible. Oh, wow, that is not fun. That is not fun at all. It just totally goes way too fast for me. Um, so while it's a feature, and it's nice that they added a feature, I, <laughs> it's unfair. So I'm glad that is not something that is turned on automatically because this game would be unplayable. Um, that's pretty unfortunate. Look at it, it's just like the red, the red dog just skips ahead. Um, let's see if I can actually get over there. Oh, all right. Wow, he just moves around very quickly. Oh, look at that guy, get him out of there. He doesn't move any quicker up there. Maybe he does? No. Alrighty. The game is... Yeah, I, I, I'm really glad that uh, other people are enjoying playing the games uh, on their Arcadia. About four people have submitted scores, I guess. Uh, I guess that's including myself, but that's to tell you the truth. Oh, that is hard. That is really hard. Um, I'm going to do a reset. Um, the options are all the same. I'm going to just do a game four. That's not something I'm familiar with. Leave option one available. I can do all my warping, which I never use. Although, I don't think I've even shown. Have I shown the warp? If I warp, this is what happens. Oh, I'm playing game four, so I pressed reset, so the warp isn't there. So, start. So now I should be able to warp. And, oh, it makes a cool little noise. And then, well, sometimes it, you just randomly appear anywhere. You don't get to choose where you go. And, Three times, huh? Oh, so using a warp takes away an apple. I did not even realize that. Oh, that's so. Basically, every single time you use warp, you have less of a chance to have a thousand points. Huh? Wow, that's I did not know that. So it's not per level. It's you start off the game with it seems five apples, and if you um you warp for each, that's each warp. I somehow overlooked that in the manual. Uh, well, I'm going to leave this game at that. Um, I'm, hopefully you enjoyed the video despite that it, my battery went dead halfway through my game. And um, give the Arcadia a chance. I think you might like it. Give this game a chance if you can play it on your emulation, even if you don't have the system. It's pretty fun. Um, this has been one of my favorite games for the system already. But uh, since I've been playing for the High Score Club, I've been enjoying it much more. Maybe someday. Um, I'll be able to beat uh, someone else's score, but for now I'll just enjoy playing the game and um, The next game we'll be playing I'll be making a video too, so uh, Stay tuned and you'll be able to see some more Arcadia goodness maybe in a week or two Thanks for watching